All right, this video is going to deal with reading solutions off of a graph. All right, with two methods, the intersection of graphs method and the x-intercept method. All right, so the first thing we're going to discuss is... All right, so this is called the intersection of graphs method. So suppose we have the graphs of two functions, uh, the blue being f, the red being g here. Uh, they intersect at this point 5, 3. All right, so given this graph, we can actually solve certain questions. For example, so let's solve f of x equals g of x. Now what this notation right here is asking us to find are all the values for x that make the values for f and the values for g be the same. In other words, what x values make the uh, y values of f and the y values of g equal? Are there any? Okay. So, for example, looking at our graph here, since our graph intersects at this uh, at this um, one point here, five comma three, we say when x is five, both f and g have the same y value. They're both equal to three. That's the only place in this particular graph where the uh, where f and g have the same y value. So this is asking us to find all the x values where that make the value of the function f. Um, equal to the value of the function g. And that's just going to happen from this particular graph here when x is equal to 5. So the solution is just the x equals 5. You're just trying to find what x value makes these, this equation appear true. Uh, so it's not the ordered pair 5 comma 3. It's just x equals 5. Alright, so what about f of x is less than g of x? Now what this thing is asking us to find are all the x values where the value of the function f is less than the value of the function g. So we're looking for where on the x-axis uh, the, the y values of the function f are less than the y values of the function g. And graphically that just means that the, the graph of f has to be below the graph of g. All right. So looking over here at our graph, we say, all right, well, what, where does that happen? Where is the graph of f below the graph of g? Well, if you take any point over here to the right of 5, the f function, the value of the f function, is less than the value of the g function. Everybody see that? No matter where you take uh, a value over here to the right of 5, f is always below g. Whereas if you take a value over here to the left of 5, that's not the case, because you have f, the values of f, all these order pairs up here, these y values are greater than these y values of g. So that's how we're reading the graph. So the solution to f of x being less than g of x would just be uh, from 5 on to infinity. So an interval notation, that would be 5, comma, infinity. X is greater than 5. Okay. All right. Third one. Where is f of x greater than or equal to g of x? So now we're looking for where the graph of f is above and equal to the graph of g. And so that would be from negative infinity over here all the way until we get to 5. <clears throat> the graph of f is always above the graph of g until you get to 5, and then that's where they're equal. So the solution would be an interval notation, negative infinity, until we get up to 5, and then a bracket at 5. So we don't, have to, we don't necessarily have to know the explicit function of what f is or what g is, but if we have their graphs, then we can answer these three questions. So now let's talk about the um, x-intercept method. All right, so the thing about the x-intercept method is you're really only playing with one graph. You're not playing with two graphs. And so we're just looking at the blue graph here of f in order to solve the following problems. So now we want to solve f of x is equal to 0. And what this equation right here is asking us to find are all the x values that make the y values, the value of the function, equal to 0. Well, looking at our graph here, uh, where would the y values be 0? Well, they would be your x-intercepts. That's how this one gets its name. So uh, you're looking for where the graph actually crosses the x-axis or hits the x-axis. So in this case, x equals 2 would be the solution because when x is 2, the y value is 0. So the solution to this equation is just x equals 2. Okay. All right, what about this one? 
where's f of x less than or equal to 0? So now this thing is asking us find all the x values where the values of the function f are less than or equal to 0. Well, if the values of the function f, which are the y values, if those are less than 0, that means they have to be negative, which means the graph of f has to be what with respect to the x-axis? Well, it has to be below the x-axis. So really, we're just coming over here on our graph and saying, all right, where is the graph below the x-axis? Well, from negative infinity until we get up here to 2, our graph is below the x-axis. Everybody see that? And since we want it to be equal to 0, 2 is included. So in interval notation, that would be negative infinity until we get up to 2, and 2 is included. Take any x value in this interval, and your y values are going to be less than or equal to 0. That's what you're looking for. Okay? All these things in red here off on the side, those are, those are x values. There are no y values we're plotting down at all here. Okay. All right, the last one says find where solve where f of x is greater than 0. And so now we're looking for where the graph of the, of the function f is above the x-axis, because that's where all the y values would be positive, right? And that would be, in this case, parentheses, 2 comma to infinity. Because if you take any number greater than 2, the y value for your function is going to be positive. Does that make sense? All right, so that's the concept of how to read graphs using the x-intercept method and the intersection of graphs method. You should be very familiar um, with both methods, uh, and then we will um, solve equations and inequalities here later with our graphing calculators um, using these two concepts. All right, study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.